Hey guys, I'm now to Pro Beats. Welcome to my humble home studio. I haven't done a studio tour in quite some time. I think the last one was close to three years ago. A lot of things have changed since then. I've upgraded a lot of my gear all of my gear most of my gear from back in the days got replaced by new improved gear i'm really happy with the space now and i really want to show it to you i want to say a big thank you to distrokid for sponsoring this video i will talk about them later on now let's get into the studio tour the studio is pretty small, but I have it split up in three. I have a video corner. I have this space right here, which is storage and where I keep my second pair of speakers. And then I have the main workstation where I actually do the mixes, where I actually edit my videos. But now I want to talk to you about this corner right here. As you can see, I have a pair of Kali Audio LP6s. These are my second pair of speakers. I will have a review on that pretty soon. On this space, I keep some of my stuff that I really need to grab and go. I really want to be fast when it comes to workflow. A small video lamp, I use it all the time to light my videos. I also use this one that I'm using right now. This is a cheapish LED panel and I have attached a softbox on it. That's what I use to light my videos. External power bank, Arturia MIDI controller. Some mini tripods, I have a Joby, a Manfrotto Pixie, this is my M50. I want to start vlogging the camera that I'm using right now, the EOS R, in combination with the, the lens that I have on it. It's pretty pretty heavy and I just don't like using it handheld. Arturia Audio Fuse, this is the interface for my MacBook Pro. Ableton push, I want to get back into production, that's what I want to use. Let's take a quick break from the studio tour because I want to talk to you about DistroKit. So what is DistroKit? DistroKit is a service for musicians and more that puts your music into online stores and streaming services. Then when people listen to your music, you make money. With DistroKid you can get your music on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon, Google Play and YouTube Music. A popular one these days is TikTok and DistroKid can get your music there too. The price for DistroKid starts at $19.99 and you will be able to upload unlimited songs and get a shiny Spotify verified checkmark. You also have two more additional plans, musician and label, if you want or need more options. Another cool feature of DistroKid is the ability to get your music into Facebook and Instagram music catalog. That means that people can use your music into their Instagram stories and that also opens up a lot of cool marketing strategy to promote your music with Instagram stories. For me as a mixing engineer, the coolest feature is the team payments. I know that a lot of you guys are struggling to get some sort of income from mixing and mastering. A nice way to start getting paid is instead of taking that one-time upfront payment, that mixing and mastering fee is to ask for a percentage of the song you're mixing. Or you can lower your rate and add a percentage on top of that. Now you'll get paid for a song you've mixed over time, mix a lot of songs, get percentage on all of them, get paid for a lot of streams. That's a really nice way to boost your passive income. Income. Work once, get paid forever, ever, ever, ever. I have a few lenses. This is one of my favorite. This is the Canon 50 millimeters 1.8, I think. Really cool for B rolls and portraits. This one is a wide angle that I think I will not keep. I was using it on the M50, and now I have the full frame EOS R. I have an adapter to adapt the lenses for the M50. Kit lens on the M50, I'm trying to sell those. And this is the 22 millimeters. 
this was my first prime lens if you're starting out i highly recommend that lens with the m50 on the m50 i have a sigma lens now this is the 60 millimeters it's wider it's faster and it's really amazing inside i keep some video stuff here i have a gimbal here I have my cables, I'm not the most organized or tidy, but when it comes to storing cables, I really need to grab and go, not to untangle every single time. Uh, some uh, gear like screwdrivers, external hard drives, notepads, and on top I like to keep the things that I use the most, for example, power bank, video clamp, my cables and things like that. So yeah, that's the storage section of the studio with the second pair of speakers. I really enjoy that I have two pair of speakers. I have a video coming up on that topic really soon. Now I want to briefly showcase the video area of the studio. The video area is a table and some stands, a microphone. I think that's it. The light is the same. That's the light that I use. I'm not the most organized when it comes to cable management, so the studio is pretty bad when it comes to that. I'm trying to improve, but <laughs> I don't think I have any hopes in the near future because cable management means that I need some downtime. At the moment, that's not possible. I'm really trying to be consistent with the videos, but that's another story. Cable management, really bad. This is the place where I do most of my videos. I usually have the light dangling from this pole. This is the microphone that I use most of the time for the videos. The audio that you're hearing right now is from a Rode video mic. It's a pretty solid system and this is the exact purpose that I got it to do this type of videos where I need to turn the camera, I need to turn it back, I need to move around. The acoustic treatment is the same. Diffusers in the back with two large bass traps ceiling panels two big ones behind my studio desk i'm a really big fan when it comes to ambience in the studio i like to have some really cool lights so that i can change that i can dim that i can change the color on the right side of my studio i have some cheap led strip that i can control with the classic remote for the main desk, I have some e-lights, I think it's called. It's a smart LED strip that I can control from my phone. It's pretty cool and I didn't have any issue with it. I got it because it's much cheaper than the Philips Hue. It's pretty cool, it's pretty bright, and that's what I use to create some sort of ambience. This is where I keep my PC, it's right behind the desk. Main speakers, PSI A70M, this is what I use for mixing and mastering. They are really, really amazing. I highly recommend trying a pair, linear and really punchy. I have both pair of speakers on isoacoustic stands, even the Kelly's. I power everything in the studio with two of these Foreman power strips. I have one powering my PC and the gear on the right side and I have one on this rack. When it comes to gear, I have this 500 series rack. This is from uh, Heritage Audio OST6. It has six slots. I have a Better Maker compressor, a Prometheus. This is a Pultec Style EQ and two Mimas 1176 compression. I really like the 500 series. They are cheaper to get and you have a lot of options nowadays with the modules, compressors, preamps, EQs. You can achieve some great things by using 500 series modules. Lately, I've been a bit paranoid about security because I see a lot of YouTubers getting hacked. So I got this UB key security key. Everything is going through this one. But look into it if you are trying to stay safe. Fader port from Presonus. Really cool for automation. When it comes to mouse and keyboard, Logitech MX keys. I have my old trusted MX Masters mouse. My main monitor is a widescreen from uh, LG. TC Electronics Clarity M analyzer. Amazing for mixing, for mastering, when you try to achieve some uh, balanced mixing and you want to see what the hell are you doing. 
In the left side of the desk, my main interface, UFX Plus. I've got it because of the drivers, probably the best drivers when it comes to Windows machines. I'm using Windows for my desktop, so that's why I got an RME. It's built like a tank, really powerful, USB, Thunderbolt, a lot of connectivity, MADI. It's the top of the range when it comes to audio interfaces. Underneath it, we have the full 16 this is a a to d and d to 8 converter then we have the tegler audio creme this is a full textile eq with a ssl type compressor underneath it we have the rme arc usb this is what i use to control the interface on top with a single press of a bottle i can switch from the psi's to the calis i can control the volume i can control dimming muting and I have a mono switch. It's a really cool addition if you are using RME. This is where I keep my MacBook Pro when I try and edit my videos. I'm using this hub HDMI to the monitor with a single press of a button on my keyboard. I can control my MacBook Pro. Same thing goes for the mouse it's really really easy to switch systems i can do it on the fly i can edit videos i can send files from one system to another really easy okay so this is me from the future i forgot to mention one of the most important things in my studio and that's the iPad. You might be asking why is an iPad that important? For me, writing things down a proper daily schedule is pretty important because when dealing with a lot of tracks that need to get uh, mixing, mastering, a lot of clients, you need to be on top of that. And that's why the iPad and the Apple Pen are really important for the studio. If you're trying to improve your workflow in the studio, please get organized. Use paper and pen. It's not really necessary to have an iPad, but it's really Really, really nice. On the left track VTC, Tegler Audio Manufacture, this is a body tube compressor. Underneath it I have the 32 channel tube summing mixer. I'm using just 16 channel for it. I don't use it all the time and it adds some really nice analog tube summing sound. From the PC I'm going into the RME, from the RME I'm going into the Sami mixer, from the Sami mixer into the Vari tube compressor, from the Vari tube compressor into the Creme, from the Creme back into the interface. Other than that the studio is pretty basic. Keep in mind that this is a home studio, this is where I live, this is not a commercial studio, I don't record, I don't have clients coming over, I mostly do this online. This is a gift and a curse, I like the comfort of working from home but sometimes it can really mess up with your mental state behind there i also have a tv i use it sometimes for netflix i like watching shows like uh, friends vikings just having them in the background while working when i do some rendering i can just relax even for a second it really helps yeah so this is my studio i'm really really happy with it i'm really happy that i took the time and i've learned how this room sounds i have no problems with my mixing translated to other systems i'm really happy with the gear that i have i have a top of the line audio interface high-end speakers those are really key elements in my studio i have some really nice pieces of gear i don't plan buying more because i don't want to have way too many options and i don't want to spend a huge amount of money on gear for me it's all about the workflow i need to move fast that's why the gear has digital recall the one from 500 series rack sometimes i mix only in the box when I need to be really fast. So this is my 2020 studio tour. I hope that you enjoy it. If you did, please subscribe, hit the like button. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and see you with another studio tour in a couple of years. Cheers.